Hey gang, welcome back. In today's video, I'd like to show you a really good and high strength conductive silver epoxy adhesive that I bought online for repairing corroded battery holder contacts, damaged solar cells, bonding copper wires to aluminum like you see right over here, repairing damaged circuit boards, smartphones, or anything else that requires a very strong, extremely low resistance connection. This conductive epoxy is ideal for people with no electronic skills or equipment that would like to make a lasting repair or when a soldering iron cannot be used. Now over the years I've tried a few different types of conductive paints. One that was sold at Radio Shack for over $20 called Circuit Works. It worked okay but it did have its limitations. It wasn't super strong. You had to be careful where you used it. This one here I did a review on a while back. It says bare conductive. The only problem is it is not conductive. It's actually a resistive paint. I'll show you in a minute. And I also tried out a couple of other types as well. Nothing came close to this product in strength or conductivity. When I purchased this epoxy, it did not come in these little perfume vials. It comes in a little blister package like you see right over here. It's intended for one-time use. I did not want to have it thrown away after using it once. So I placed the two parts in these two bottles. They're airtight and I could use them at a later date. This epoxy, which I'll give you a close-up in a minute, uses silver-coated ceramic material. And by using that, you're going to end up with a connection that is extremely low resistance, around 0 0.0015 ohms. When you purchase this, you can see the activator is an extremely small amount and the silver epoxy is right up around where the pen is. You would take all the activator, dump it inside of the epoxy right here, thoroughly mix it, and then you would have about 30 minutes to use that before it starts to set up. Now when a full cure is reached, you can expect, according to the manufacturer, an incredible 13,600 PSI compressive strength from this epoxy. There are two ways to cure this material. You can just mix the two together, wait 24 hours at room temperature to reach maximum strength. If you apply heat around 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit, you can have this cure in around 15 or 20 minutes. You can also apply heat that is less than 100 degrees Celsius and it will also speed up the cure time. But if you do not apply heat, it will fully cure within 24 hours. Now before we take a closer look at this product and I show you how I'm going to use it on this battery pack and take a closer look at this plate that has a copper wire bonded to it. First let me show you why this paint here would not be good for use with many of your projects including circuit boards because when you use it you're going to be adding resistance and if you add resistance to a circuit board you're going to affect how the circuit works. Now to show you how this paint worked I made a squiggly line and allowed it to dry. I'm going to take one probe, touch it right here, take this probe and I'm going to move it along the line. Over here you can observe the resistance reading. Now very close, you can see it's about 140 ohms. And as I'm moving along that line, you see resistance increasing. And this is why you would not want to use this on a circuit. So at the very end, the resistance is around 1.37. And even if I put the probes very close together, like a millimeter or two, you're still going to have 40 or 50 ohms. And the middle should be around 700. All right, and over here, back to 1300 ohms. All right, now let's take a closer look at the new epoxy. Here you can see how little of the activator they give you. That little amount is supposed to be dumped into this bottle over here. And in the polo bottle, you can see the silver inside. Right there. Okay, this is the battery holder I'll be repairing. This one had alkaline batteries that leaked inside of it and it was cleaned using the method outlined in my highly popular video 
on how to clean corrosion from battery holders in electronics. If you have not seen my other video, there'll be a link posted at the end of this video that you can click on to take you to that video. Now once all the corrosion was cleaned from this holder, it left an area right over here. You can see it's clean, but the plating has been eaten away. And in order to prevent oxidation of the surface in the future, which would lead to a high resistance connection, causing an intermittent connection or a poor connection between the battery holder and the device, you either want to apply a thin film of silicone grease over this area, or the much better method would be to take this epoxy and coat this entire area so you have an excellent connection between the battery and the device. Keep in mind if you have any issues with the springs inside here, you can clean this area as well as the top of the spring and apply the same conductive epoxy to both of those surfaces as well. If your holder has a wire leading into it that broke off due to the corrosion, you would simply clean that area using a tool like you see here. This is called a nick sander. You use it on your finish of your car. It cleans up the area where the paint chipped so you can apply the touch of paint. Nothing more than fiberglass bristles. You would clean that area. Once you clean it, you would take some 91% alcohol, apply it to a Q-tip, wipe over all the areas that you cleaned, and allow it to air dry. Once the alcohol has fully evaporated from the holder, you can then mix up the epoxy as shown right here. All right, I'm going to place a small amount of the epoxy inside the spoon. It's not going to take much. This stuff is very thick. All right, that's actually plenty in there. Now a small amount of the activator. Using a wire, just shove this inside. It's going to cling to the wire. I'm going to mix it up really good. You could also use a plastic toothpick, but do not use wood. It's going to absorb the activator and you're going to be wasting it. Luckily, this stuff does not have a strong odor. Let's reach inside, coat it like this. Perfect. And that's all you need. So let me mix this up really nice. Looks really good actually. Okay, I'm going to take the battery holder and using this nice brush, apply it. Some right under that rivet. Work it under there. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna let that set up. Okay, while the epoxy is curing on the battery holder, it's gonna take probably 15 minutes. I'm gonna be using heat. Let's take a look at this aluminum plate. Now, ordinarily, you would not be able to connect a copper wire. In this case, it's copper and it's tinned to an aluminum plate unless you put a ring connector on the end, placed a little bit of Noalox on this plate, drilled a hole and bolted it to the plate. All I did was just clean this area with the Nick sander, wiped it down with rubbing alcohol, mixed up the epoxy, placed it right in that area. I took the stripped end of the wire which is already in the epoxy and I coated it with the epoxy as well. Took the epoxy coated stripped end stuck it inside the epoxy and allowed it to cure overnight. Let me show you how low the resistance is between this wire and this plate through that silver epoxy. Okay, let's take one end, connect it over here, push down this probe to the plate. Look at how low that resistance is. Point 0.1 is just about what it is when I touch the two together. Yep, 
Incredible. Okay, the power supply is set at 13 volts. You can see the positive from the power supply connects to that aluminum plate. Current will flow through, through the epoxy, into the copper wire, into the positive of this ultra bright white LED strip light, draws around one amp of current, the negative of the strip light connects to the negative of the power supply. Here we go. And there you have it. No problem at all. Almost one amp of current. I don't know too many epoxies that can actually do this. And the current is very stable. If this was heating up, you would see a change in the level of current flowing through the circuit. Okay, let's see how tough this stuff is. Very strong. Pulling very hard. I see the blood in my fingers. That is not going to come off, guys. That is some strong stuff. Now let's take a closer look at the battery holder. Okay, this is the finished product. Fully dry. I have to drop it inside the light. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.